Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Committee of the Whole Meeting for November 28th. The town of Hinton respectfully acknowledges that it is located on the First Peoples' traditional lands. We recognize that the traditional territory to show respect and understanding for those who walked this land since time immemorial. Today, we uphold our ongoing responsibility to work together in the spirit of the intent of the treaties with all the First Peoples and nations that call this place home. The town expresses gratitude for the opportunity to build a better community on these sacred lands for no. generations to come. And with that, I'd like to call this meeting to order. First on the agenda with the adoption of the agenda. Uh, council, any additions or deletions to this afternoon's agenda? Seeing none. And to administration, any changes to the agenda? No changes coming in. Great. Thank you, CEO Panasic. So, Council, I'd look for uh, Councilor Race. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to move that we adopt the Committee of the Whole agenda for November 28th, 2022. Thank you, Councilor Race. Council, any questions? All right, then I'll call this the question that uh, the committee adopt the agenda as presented. Please vote now. And that is carried unanimously. <laughs> Thank you, Council. Uh, next, we have Citizens Minute with Council. Is there anyone present? Seeing none, anyone online from the State of Canada? No, there's none. All right. So, moving on then to our reports from administration. We're going to move to 5.1 2024 drafts capital budget. Over to you, CEO. Thank you, Chair. Um, I will turn this one right over to Ms. Borbo. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Senior Panasic. Uh, the package that was sent out last week contained the uh, 2024 draft capital budget as uh, compiled from our October 24th and 25th budget meetings. Um, the first page of the capital plan was a summary or status report of capital projects in progress or completed during 2023. Uh, the actual year to date will change on some of those. This was simply included to uh, provide community with an overview of uh, work that's been done on the capital plan that was approved last year on December 6th. Any questions from the 2023 status report? Council, any questions? 2023 status? Seeing none, Ms. Uh, in the following page of the plan uh, noted the 2024 projects that were provided in the budget workshop meeting on the 24th and 25th of October. There are three new additions to that. You'll see them partway down the page about halfway. Um, they say new three replacement pickups, new utility trainee vehicle, and the land acquisition reserve fund. Our committee has not had an opportunity to uh, be briefed on any of those, so I look to committee for direction if you would like to go through and make any changes on direction on any of the projects presented at the last, or if you would like us to move directly into updates and, uh, or sorry, presentations on the three new capital project plans. Council, any questions or committee, any questions on the already existing uh, proposed capital plan. Councilor Taylor. The asphalt uh, resurfacing and intersection improvement for $3 million. That just still to me seems like a huge amount of money because the only problem I could see in that intersection is a small little bump in the road in the middle. Is, is that, can that project be downsized to make it less expensive? Or why are we going to that much extensive repair for the obvious uh, problem in the road, which is a little bump in the middle of the road, like a little hole that's, that seems to be very expensive for, for resurfacing like that. Okay. Uh, uh, is that being bid out? Uh, why is that so expensive? It can be downsized, I guess. Okay, through, through the chair to uh, all the committee, uh, that project is in the early stages of being designed. Uh, so that is a very approximate estimate at, at, at this point. 
Um, we felt that we've chosen an estimate in the middle. Uh, if the water pipes underneath that road end, end up needing significant work, that number will grow. If the pipes turn out to be in good shape beneath that road, that number will shrink. Um, so we've budgeted sort of a number in the middle, uh, depending on how those pipes turn out. Is, is sort of the answer there. Uh, there is some significant work that we're planning in terms of uh, the jug handle should be concrete instead of asphalt for a long-term solution there. Uh, the asphalt there quickly deteriorates with the weight of those uh, heavy trucks. Uh, we have an agreement with West Fraser for hauling uh, overweight loads, uh, and that agreement allows them to cost share in that expense. So we still have to do those conversations with them, but we do have an existing agreement, so that'll uh, impact that cost of that project as well. And so that could downsize the project. That could down the cost. Well, it, they could cost share the cost. The the concrete will be uh, an expensive thing, but we'd be doing it to uh, support those trucks, and so that some of that cost should be borne by West Fraser. And we still need to have those conversations, although we do have an agreement with them about that already. Yeah, and last year we delayed this project because we didn't have the underground work done. We still an underground assessment done. And now we're going ahead, and we still don't have the underground assessment. We're, we're very close to having it. The, the camera works been done. We just haven't received the results yet. I think the point of going ahead without having the underground assessment done is that you have a better idea what the cost is going to be. So if the underground assessment shows that there's extensive work required underground, and that dramatically increases the cost, would you come back to us? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, the, the other point to add about that project is, although we have a limited uh, uh, expectation of success. We are doing a skip application to see if we could uh, get some financial money towards that project as well. It's a bit of a long shot, but we're trying. Could I ask a follow-up? <laughs> that project will uh, take care of that uh, problem we've got on that corner, Mr. Ernie. Like the problem we have in that corner when you come out of the Hinton Center, is there is no right turn lane. Everybody is making a right turn lane in the dirt there, right? Mm -hmm. So that will have a proper right turn lane so traffic doesn't have to back up at the intersection so they can turn right. We will be looking at that, yes. Okay. I don't know what the solution is yet. We're still the infancy of that, but we will look at that issue. Okay, thanks. Okay, um, I am myself next. Um, I guess is there any particular is is particular order we should be ready or just asking questions on the previous uh, what would you prefer administration uh, through the chair the the way we saw it was that we would speak specifically to the new items that okay. are, have been included right and then we would uh, and then we would open it up so if there are any uh, questions about any individual item or if council wants to reconsider. Any item that either was excluded or is included, and we want to speak directly to those at the, the wish of council, we 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 could we could go through those afterwards. Okay, so if, if uh, councils or committees okay, we'll go we'll go with the new ones, present the new ones, uh, ask any questions, and then we'll do the other. I'll keep a side uh, um, list here because uh, I'm assuming some of those questions were on things we've already discussed. So why don't we then move to those new items and then uh, come back to the existing items. Administration. Thank you. I'll invite uh, Mr. McLaughlin to speak on the first two. They were in your package and I believe uh, they will be up on the screen shortly. The first one being the uh, replacement pickups. Yeah, I just got one. It's very it's towards the end of the capital project profile. My apologies. I printed more page numbers for on. Re replacement pickups. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So it is that it sweet. I don't have a page number. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Have found it. 
so this CPP is in front of you tonight. Uh, what, when we met last time, we had enterprise uh, in in the package, but we uh, shortly before we started the last meeting, we decided to push the uh, bringing enterprise forward until a 2025 budget, although we'll talk to you about it in 2024. Uh, so the decision to push out uh, the decision on enterprise brought this needing to be considered now. Um, so we do have three pickup trucks. Well, we have, we've, we're putting forward three pickup trucks. There is other pickup trucks that are uh, also uh, mm -hmm. approaching the end of their life, but we figured uh, three was the uh, uh, the maximum that we could ask for. And, and, and so these are the three that we're putting forward for replacement. Uh, they're currently in our fleet. Uh, there is a number of issues with them. Uh, our mechanics do have uh, have stated some of the problems with them. In in some cases, the floor is rust, uh, rusted out, and you can see daylight through the floor. Um, I guess I would take any questions on them. Through the chair, I, I will add that the, the other pickup that we are discussing is uh, there's an engine knock in it, and uh, there's uh, our mechanics are skeptical that that one would last another year. Uh, the other one, I believe, was um, older, uh, it would be more of a scheduled replacement, but it is an okay mechanical condition. Committee, really? Councillor Taylor. What's the cost of uh, fixing 403 and 407? Because it was my vehicle. I want to know that before I replaced it. Thank you. Through the chair to all maybe that's a tough question to do until you actually pull it apart and uh, and and fix it. I mean, uh, in in both those cases, there it's uh, having. Uh, motor problems. Uh, if you ended up having to replace the motor, I would estimate that it would be probably fifteen thousand dollars would be a ballpark. But that's that's a bit of a, a guess. You might have it. You have your own guesses. That would be as close as mine. If I may, uh, I too have uh, a quick question, and uh, I guess the question. It's hard to comment on it because we haven't yeah. talked about the fleet services and the possibility it's not coming to us until next year for 2025 budget. But if we were to proceed with, because uh, I agree with the 301 uh, from what it looks of it, the other two, I realize, you know, the cost to fix them. But what would happen to these vehicles um, if, the, if the town of Hinton were to go to leasing our fleet? What would happen to these three vehicles purchased? Uh, moving forward, would they stay in our fleet? Would, would, how would that work? Uh, through the chair to all of committee, that uh, the enterprise program uh, flips the vehicles fairly often, uh, usually around the twenty thousand kilometer mark, um, and and so they they would take over management of the fleet. And if you have vehicles that are worth more money going into the program, that will actually save you money participating in the program. So uh, there wouldn't be any uh, wasted dollars. Uh, we have told Enterprise that we're gonna hold off bringing uh, their proposals or, or their, their ideas in front of council until 2024. And they actually said that the, they would even pr uh, provide us pricing to even purchase vehicles through them so that we could compare uh, just a straight pur uh, purchase price uh, for these vehicles. Uh, we would still certainly solicit the, uh, our regular quotes uh, for comparison if, if these vehicles go ahead. Uh, but I don't believe we would uh, hurt the decision of going forward with enterprise in the future by doing this. Okay. I just have one quick follow up and then I'm here, uh, Neeson. Um, these look like light duty trucks. Um, I'm just wondering what kind of, what kind of, I guess, service do these provide you know, because when I look at it and, and I look at the shape they're in and only 131 and 117,000 kilometers, 
you know, I mean, they obviously aren't high mileagers, but are they hard used that like, what is the, because I'm wondering if a light duty truck is not necessarily appropriate for what the, what the service is providing is, is my concern. Uh, through the chair dog committee, this, uh, these vehicles are over 10 years old. And so it's, uh, age is, uh, a big a big factor more so than the kilometers uh, being vehicles used in town they're not used out of town that often and so we don't put a lot of kilometers on them uh, these are the the crew vehicles uh, they're used for you know hauling barricades uh, hauling equipment uh, doing traffic control doing checks on the roads just gen general uh fleet use okay thank you mr mayor <clears throat> to clarify now that we've got these three trucks and the next item is another truck are there cost savings available to us if we were to explore the enterprise solution at this time uh, through the chair to all of committee um i, I think that uh when we go, when and if we go forward with enterprise, it has the chance to save us uh, some money on a regular basis. Uh, it has the potential to uh, run a newer fleet, so there's less downtime. Uh, there, there's a n number of advantages. There's, there's fuel savings uh, because you're running a newer fleet, and and all of those factors in into the presentation. But I, I wouldn't say that uh, we should rush that decision. I think it'll take a few meetings spread over uh, at, at least six months for you to make a proper decision on that. Uh, and so I don't think that uh, you'd be wasting very much money by purchasing vehicles now and then deciding to do enterprise later. Okay, thank you. Mr. Mayor, uh, Councilor Sasha. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> So these questions come up before when we've talked about purchasing assets, especially limited use assets. Uh, these vehicles, they only have 12 to 14,000 kilometers per year put on them. And it looks like they've aged out before they've miled out. So I'm, I'm, again, I'm going to ask if there's any consideration given towards purchasing leasebacks or slightly used vehicles rather than brand new especially in an application like this. Uh, through the chair to all of me, we, uh, we could certainly look at that and then bring some options back. Uh, you, you could have this as a, uh, as a noted uh, recommendation and you could have us uh, look for those options first before proceeding with new purchases. I'd be quite happy with that. I think the only difficulty with the idea that's being presented is the difficulty finding, uh, you know, if if, the, if they're available and if you can get a good deal, uh, I, I think there is some opportunities for that. And I don't think that that would be a bad idea, um, but it's, it's you know, can you source them? That, that's the difficult part. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Councillor Stashik. Uh, Councillor Chambers, Mayor. Uh, through the chair, just a question. So the overall impact on your operation, if let's say two of these trucks were to go down in a fairly short period of time, um, what would that overall impact look like for that crew on a regular basis it would be fairly substantial? Or is there other vehicles within the fleet that could be temporarily used while sourcing a solution for looking at a new vehicle? Uh, through the uh, through the chair to all the committee, um, you know, being down a vehicle or two, I would say is uh, sort of normal. It, <laughs> it, it, it happens and, and we fix them and we get back going again. So, I mean, we can sort of roll with those punches. It's just uh, if we delay the decision and, and it's, and something should happen to one of the vehicles and you hit the point of, should you fix it? Well, then we have to come back to council and and provide you those details and have that have that answer before we can move forward. Uh, but we we do have other vehicles that we share around, and and that's quite common for us to do what we need to do to be able to stay working. 
Thank you, Councilor Chambers. Um, Mayor. Looking at the mileage numbers and and uh, the report here, it looks like a couple of these vehicles are, are very high idle time. They don't they don't seem to drive a lot. They seem to sit there a lot. Are these trucks the right vehicle or the right the right item for this? Uh, are they primarily used as, as traffic blocking safety mechanisms? Could they be replaced by a, a trailer with lights, or uh, is there there some other solution? Or maybe are we buying the wrong the wrong vehicles, perhaps. Maybe we should be buying diesel engines instead of gas engines. So they're just going to sit there idling all day. Uh, has any any consideration uh, gone towards the the use of these vehicles and, and their typical day to day? Through the chair dollar committee, I don't think we. Uh, they're used as pickup trucks. I, I don't think we could replace them as a trailer. Uh, in terms of whether we could be running diesels. Uh, that's a potential we could look at if that was council's wishes that that, that would be a much higher uh, expenditure off off the start. So I'm not, I'm not sure that that would, uh, knowing that they are aging out potentially be, uh, I, I think you're right. The, 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 problem, the reason they're aging out is they're 10 years old and they have a lot of idling back. That, that's totally correct. Um, but in terms of other solutions, we haven't really done that. Uh, one of these needs to be a long box because we end up uh, hauling things that won't fit the short box, uh, but the, the rest of them would be uh, short boxes. Mr. Mary, you have a follow-up? Excellent. So I understand that the, you know, the cost of diesel engines goes up uh, the follow-on question, though, for for some of these units is: Do we have the maintenance numbers? How much we put into these vehicles in, through maintenance and parts over their lifespan? Is that something that that we're tracking even in our our asset management system? Uh, through the chair to all the committee, uh, yes, yes, we have those numbers. I don't have them in front of me. Uh, we. In our accounting software, currently we have every unit number uh, individually budgeted. Uh, so we have a fuel amount and a maintenance amount for every vehicle. And so when something's done to a vehicle, it is coded to that vehicle. So the, uh, those those histories are available. Yeah. Uh, and to Councillor Taylor's point about the, the replacement cost, I, I think a lot of fleet management uh, systems look at and use their metric of that maintenance cost to determine their uh, recapitalization of vehicles. Uh, I'd be curious to see those numbers uh, at some point before the, the budget discussion rolls out too far, but I'm good on this topic. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I myself, and uh, you know, uh, based on what Mayor, Mr. Mayor uh, spoke to in regards to diesel, especially with high uh, idling vehicles for whatever reason, I think that that's a, a you know, I, I know the cost is more, but the longevity, the sustainability, I'm just seeing that these vehicles, gas may not be the most appropriate uh, units for, for this particular job. Um, Play Plus might be a little more, uh, I guess, stable, uh, stronger built, usually diesels are. So, I, I, you know, it's just something I think that we should consider uh, for some of these units, especially too, if we're going to consider later, uh, you know, and it's not this discussion, but, you know, looking at that, if, when we look at the changing our fleet services to see what percentage might be necessary to have diesels. So, um, and Councilor Taylor now. The industry people I talk to that have low mileage vehicles uh, that I owe a lot that have engine trouble uh, had the problem of they were doing the oil changes uh, based on the kilometers, not on the hours of operating. And that's what they think caused the uh, the engine trouble. So they changed their maintenance schedule so that the uh, oil changes are based on the hours of operating. And that's what they tell me has been the problem to the engine trouble. So is our oil maintenance schedule based on hours of operation, or is it based on the kilometers of use? For the chair, I would have to follow up with you on that question. I, 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 I do know that we have a, a good maintenance schedule, but I don't know if it's based on well, kilometers or hours. It's based on, right? So yeah. the thing idles 10 times longer than it. 
runs for clock. That's what they tell me is a problem. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Uh, Council, um, we have no consensus yet on this uh, item. Is there any appetite, Councillor Stashik? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to see consensus of Council to include three replacement pickups in the 2024 capital budget. The amount of $120,000. speak to it? Absolutely. So I think the $120,000 is a reasonable number. If that means replacing two of them with brand new units, or if that means replacing three of them with used units, so be it. I can't support 200 grand, well, 120. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Stashik. Council, we currently have a consensus. Any comments or discussion on the current consensus? Mr. Mayor? $120,000 seems like it's a high risk of not delivering two vehicles even. I'd be interested in upping that dollar value by a small margin to, to give them some wiggle room. We look at uh, 66.5 is their uh, estimate. Uh, if we doubled that off, we're 133. So uh, would council be open to a friendly amendment of 135 is the value for that item? Council, we have a friendly amendment um, of 135,000. Is there any objections to that? So we're gonna quickly, just quickly vote to on that 135, just to make sure. Um, don't need to, just as long as there's no objection. Thank you. Okay, so uh, if there's no objections, then we will make that friendly amendment of 135,000. Stay in camera. While we're getting it up there, any other questions or discussion on the proposed consensus? Administration? Uh, through the chair to all the committee, I, I would be uh, open to uh, uh, if this passes to actually have it as a noted a noted project that we wouldn't do any purchase without bringing it back to council. Therefore, I could bring you back with options of what we could source used. I could bring you back whether there's a diesel option available. Uh, I could bring you back to meet the, the maintenance history. And I'd be more than happy to do that to, to create, it, create that as a noted project. Thank you, Administration. Councillor Stachik. Thank you, Mr. Chair. For myself, I'm not interested in seeing that. Or for me, that's getting too far down in the weeds. I think it's more productive just to give administration a number and then they apply that number as they best see fit, whether that's you know, two new vehicles or three used vehicles and whatever best fits the need of the organization, gas, diesel, whatever. That's not, I don't feel that's up for me to decide. I don't have that information and I'm not going to task administration of the work to get me that information. So. I trust the judgment. Thank you. And if I, I have myself you now, um, I'm in favor of the consensus, and I too concur. I, I don't believe, and unless you have to come back to us because 135,000 is not enough, um, I think that you know that's the only time I'd like you to sit back on this matter. But I think I trust administration to take that money and purchase. And and I mean, hearing this this evening, I'm guessing. The option of looking at lease buybacks and things like that will also be considered uh, when looking, especially with a smaller budget. Uh, so I'm uncomfortable with that, but I I will uh, I will be in favor of the consensus. Thank you. I uh, see you through the chair, and, and just for clarity, we will be bringing fleet management back, but more of us will have some discussion of looking at the different options mm -hmm. that are available. And there are a number of different options. Uh, you know, we, we run our fleet very traditionally and we, we run them pretty long, but um, there's a lot of good data out there on, you know, the ideal time and the total cost of ownership. And there's also a lot of good programs out there that I think might be a good fit. So so that more wholesome discussion about fleet management in general will be coming back into it. Great. Thank you, CAO. Council, anything else on this matter before I call the question, this consensus? Yep. 
And seeing none, then uh, I'm going to call the question. You want to give a wording on it? We're just going to do the sheet. Yes. Consensus. Just see, yeah. So we're going to see consensus that we include the, uh, just to make sure I get the first one, the uh, repl three replacement pickups for $135,000. Committee, all those in favor? And that is carried, carried unanimously. Thank you. Okay, moving on then, administration. Thank you, Ed. The, uh... Directly following that one is the utility trading vehicle, and I'll turn that as well over to Mr. McLaughlin. Thank you, uh, thank you committee. Uh, so we separated this one out from the, the previous one of three vehicles because this is growing the fleet versus fleet replacement. That's why we, we have separated, separated this out in front of you. Uh, at the previous budget meeting, you, we did talk about uh, hiring an additional uh, utility person, uh, and that was that's built into the current budget. Uh, but we di didn't specifically tell you that we also that person needs to be able to get around. Uh, so that's why this is in front of you. Uh, again, it was being put forward as a pretty standard vehicle, and uh, I would take any questions. Thank you, administration. So I have a, a quick question. I guess. The intent of this vehicle is it solely is it for work purposes or for transportation purposes? Um, this particular vehicle, like, is it just to get a, be a staff around from place to place, or is it a work vehicle like the previous ones we saw? Uh, through the committee, it is like the previous ones we saw. Uh, it will leave town very seldom. It would. It, it, its purpose is to. Uh, equip it with the tools that a utility person uses on a day-to-day -day basis, and uh, it, it's to run around town doing valves and locates and uh, all that good stuff. Okay, thank you. Committee, questions on this particular consensus from this item? Councilor Taylor and then Mr. Mayor. Well, just a comment, then a question. You're comparing us to 68 utility operators fully staffed for other neighboring municipalities. Is that a comparison to municipalities that also have a bulk mill that does uh, half of our work for us? Um, just point of order. We're talking about a vehicle. We're not talking about positions. This is my project justification. I'm referring to the project justification. So it is part of that. They provided this as project justification. You read right it for me. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about. Okay, thank you. Proceed. Uh, through the chair to all, all of committee, um, I, I would say that that 68 utility operators that stated there would be for a municipality that does operate their uh, their own water treatment treatment plant. So obviously that does save us some utility positions. Uh, however, currently only having uh, two utility people. Uh, is leaving us extremely short. There is a lot of work not getting done on our distribution and our collection systems uh, that should be getting done. And, and so we feel that we need this additional person uh, to start making improvements in terms of uh, looking after our water and sewer system. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I think Councilor Reyes. So if this vehicle is not purchased, but the utility operator is hired, will that person have a job to do? Through the chair to all of committee, we would uh, we would be short pickup trucks. We uh, yes, that person would still have a job to do, and we would we would manage to somehow, some way that we would still. Do what we do. We 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 do the best we can with the equipment and people provided to us, and uh, and we would continue to do such. We wouldn't leave you sitting in the office. Okay. Council Race. Thank you, Deputy. So, should that third position go through, would each operator have their own backup? Do the chair to all of the committee. Yes, they they would have access to to their own to their own vehicles for running around. Uh, 
there, there's only so much of the work that requires two people. Uh, lot, lots of time the work is solo work. And so in order to be uh, more productive with the additional person, it does require the additional pickup to do their job. May I follow up? Mm -hmm. So uh, how many people would work in a day? You have three operators. How many would be working in, in one day? Through the chair to all committee, most days would be all three. However, when you factor in uh, holidays and training and this kind of stuff, there's there'd be a number of instances where again you're put that put back down to two people. Uh, currently, we uh, borrow staff from public works quite often to uh, to do some of the tasks that mm -hmm. require two people. Uh, so there would be a little bit less of that borrowing happening. Uh, with three utility people. So is there a work they're basically in that building working with their vehicles parked outside? Through the chair. On a typical working day? Through the chair of all the committee, their typical working day is out and about in the town through, me, through at many different sites throughout the day, scattered across the town. Uh, they have daily checks that they have to do at many of the facilities. They're turning on and off utilities for people's houses. They are flushing sewer lines. They are uh, looking for leaks. They're they're doing whatever it needs to be done. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Councilor Chair. Okay. Yeah, I, I'd like to see consensus that we purchase the vehicle. I'm convinced that three people will be working out at separate times doing solo jobs. I think we're going to hire this position. They need to have a truck, a really well equipped bicycle. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, <laughs> Councillor Taylor, for that consensus. So, Council, we now have a consensus mm -hmm. to include the utility training vehicle mm -hmm. to the 2024 budget. Any further discussion or questions? Seeing none, I'd like to see consensus to add this to the 2024 budget. So all those in favor? And that is carried unanimously. Thank you, committee. Councillor Stashen. Just a question. Uh, this is conditional on the utility operator being hired. Can this direction be made conditional, or is it just assumed that if that position doesn't get hired for some reason, this vehicle is not purchased? So you have an uh, through the chair to members of council. Um, I, I don't know if we need to make it conditional. I think uh, it goes without saying that if, uh, if we don't decide to fund or uh, move towards uh, an in-house operator, then this would be removed from the budget automatically before this is brought forward to council. <laughs> Okay, all right, uh, committee, then administration moving on to our third, the land acquisition reserve fund, I believe. Is that the third one? That yes, is thank new? you. Uh, page 75 of 76 in our package for town. <laughs> and I will invite Mr. Mr. Knasek to speak to it. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Portball. So, um, Council, in, in front of you, you have a, uh, a CPP for the Land Acquisition Reserve Fund, uh, and this allocates $450,000 for uh, uh, opportunities when it comes to uh, purchasing of land. Um, I think for today, that's uh, all I will I'll say at this moment. I think if you wanted to discuss further details, uh, my recommendation would be to go to this session. Okay, thank you, CEO Panasic. Committee. Mr. Mayor. Are we able to go into closed session at this stage? Anytime. Then I'd like to make a motion that council go into move into closed session. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We have a motion to move into closed session. <clears throat> council? Any discussion? Okay, we'll call the question then to move into closed session. All those in favor? That is carried unanimously. Thank you, everyone. We will be moving into closed session. It'll be back. Would you like to? Uh,